Hello, how are you? I hope you're good. Today, I have the update of the Copile spreadsheet. We don't go the same places that we used to. So first of all, it always honestly brightens my day when someone says that they actually enjoy using the Copile and don't think that I'm crazy. Um, last time I made the spreadsheet, it was 2019 apparently. So it's been a little while and I've asked you guys if there's any updates you would like to see, um, any changes you'd like to see implemented and there was quite a lot. So I selected some that were most requested because I still don't want to like overburden the spreadsheet too much. That being said, there was a lot of additional stuff. So this time I will include two versions, the basics and also the plus. <laughs> um, is that even how? Yeah, plus version two. First of all, if you don't know what Copile is, Copile is a rating system for fiction books that I've made for myself to help kind of navigate the five star system. Um, so then I shared it with you guys, uploaded this video, just in case it's helpful for some and it was for some, which is amazing. <laughs> And then a couple of years later, I think, I also made a spreadsheet so we can kind of track it and have the calculations done automatically when you input your ratings. Um, and I will link that video down below if you want to hear more about Copile. So there are seven categories that I read most books for. So there's characters, atmosphere, writing, plot, intrigue, logic, which is kind of world building and enjoyment. And as according to that score, then it's separated into uh, stars. It's not entirely evenly distributed because to me I wanted the, a narrower window for five stars and uh, I think those who clicked on this video likely have already seen the other one and just won the updated version so I'm not gonna speak too long about this but I will link the previous two videos where I do go in more in depth about each category and what can I look for. I think let's just go through this spreadsheet and I will show you the changes. So once you get into the link below, it will lead you, lead you to a folder that will have two files. You see three here, but this third one's not gonna be here. This is just an example that I made for showing you the new the new bits. Um, I made out 20 books because I didn't wanna use the real ones um, and they're pretty, pretty dumb. <laughs> You'll have the Copile uh, version two, the basics, and then the Copile plus version two as well. I have a feeling most of you will go with the, the plus version, but for those who really, really don't want to go into nitty gritty and just want a place with the copile still existing, but with the minimal effort and things to track, um, then there's gonna be the basic one. But let's let's go through the example spreadsheet. So that's actually going to be how the plus one looks like, and I will show you what the basic one is later on in a bit too. First of all, there's some new colors, exciting stuff, I know. <laughs> um, a lot of the stuff is the same, and then there's additions, and there's additional stuff in the drop downs. Actually, a couple of points just before I even go in there. Um, as I mentioned before, this is mainly for fiction. I know a lot of people read nonfiction and read um, biographies or things like that that don't quite fit into the core pile. I know some people adjust it and replace cer certain core pile elements with others that they prefer for that particular genre. It's just what I know best and I don't quite know what you would exactly be looking for for other little genres that don't fit into this. Granted, there's also comic books, and I used to have um, an adjusted system for that uh, when I did make Copile for the first time, but then I realized that I am just way more lenient with comics, and I didn't really need a system because it usually was like art style, story, and enjoyment, and that's it. To incorporate that into the spreadsheet, it would be a whole a whole thing at the moment it's more so for other things but you can just disregard the copile thing and insert manually your rating to still for that to still be counted in the stats later on which i will show you in a second let's also play a game of how fast it'll get dark <laughs> examples um so i have some other books here to showcase some stuff. I kind of went off with some tropes that I like or dislike here and uh, totally made up this stuff. It's not it's not in any particular order. I just needed some to this to be filled in so I can show you the stats and stuff later on. I left one empty so we can put it in together. So first up there's a title. Now when you scroll up it is locked so you will always see which title stuff is relating to. Um, I just thought that might be a bit useful considering 
there's a lot to scroll through now. Um, then we have the month, a normal drop down, pretty self-explanatory. You pick the month, you put the author, oh, author's name, um, then how you read. The only new thing here is the mixed media. Um, I've noticed that myself a lot. I would just put both. Um, so either physical ebook or audiobook, but a lot of like quite often I read both physically, like physically and through an audiobook. So mixed media would be the correct choice there. Um, I will make an important point here. Even in the charts that have drop downs and that have stats in the stats bar here, you can still write whatever you want. You can make your own category. And if you don't know how to add it to the drop down, you can still write like um, uh, stone tablet. Then it will it will prompt that it's an invalid input. However, you can still leave it like that and use the stone tablet one later on for and it still will show up in the stats. So this is not limited to the stuff, but if you are adding some categories and things, I would um, prompt to just only kind of stick with specific wording so they are clumped together. Um, so if you write sto stone tablet and then the second one, you write tablet of stone, um, those two will not show up as one thing. That's the only thing. Next up, it's pages read. So this is a little bit different from before because we are introducing DNFs in here. And I thought long and hard how to do this so it's not too gimmicky still. Um, but this this, this this column is for pages that you have read. I know some people want to still count the pages that they read of the book that they DNF because it might be a substantial amount, like 200 or something. So let's say that we did DNF this one um, and we have two, read 250 pages, but the whole book is actually in a range of 600 to 700, well, 650 to 700. So that is the book length. Um, if you actually have read it and the book is 679 pages, then you would include all of that. If you do want to also just see how many pages there are in a book, you can right click on here and then insert one to the right and then just put pages in total or something and then um, put how many pages there are in a book. I don't necessarily want that, so I just delete that. Um, let's say that we did DNF this one. Let's go that route. Uh, but we read majority of it, like 500 pages. That is a lot of stone. <laughs> let's just say that. All right, then we have main genre and notable subgenres. So this was highly asked uh, for the book to be able to have more genres. The way that I decided to include this is that the main genre is the one that we still will track. So let's say that this is, the name was, oh no, who will she pick? So let's say that it is a YA fantasy <laughs> uh, with a love romance, love romance, uh, love triangle. So fantasy. And let's say that the subgenre is urban. Oops, urban fantasy. So this main genre is the trackable one that will have a stats page and it has a drop down of a lot. Um, I think adventure is the only one that was a new one. Someone did ask for, for a realistic fiction that actually kind of falls under contemporary. So I just left it there. Uh, and notable subgenre is basically just a notes for yourself because this is such a subjective thing for most part. So I think more so a notes column for your own sake, just to note what you think you would like to describe this book as as well to others. Um, hopefully that'll be enough, but because otherwise it is a little bit difficult to incorporate that here. Um, then we have age category, which let's say we said that this was a new, uh, not new adult, sorry, young adult. Um, let's say that this was released in 2019. Um, you just type that in. Um, this is acquired. We have gifted as well. People were asking for an ARCs specifically category, but I am including that as gifted because I know vast majority of us don't get ARCs. But gifted, it's still gifted to you, but a friend could also gift it. Uh, so again, own would be pretty much like I bought it myself or I already had it from like, you know, I inherited it. Um, borrowed is more so for the library or any type of online thing that you go and then you have to return it later. Um, and then there's gifted. Um, but gifted is the only new one here. So let's say that this was gifted. One of the biggest requests is for people saying that I want to know if this is a reread or is this a new time, like first time reading it. So we have a column for that. Let's say this is a first time. Another, another massive request was to 
know how many series you have and how many series you're reading or whatever standalones. Uh, so let's say this is a part of the series of some sort of stone, <laughs> stone tablet book that we're reading, also released in 2019. Great overall. I also added something sneaky, which I hope you guys will like. I don't know, it's not sneaky, but I hope you guys will like. There's a column that's asking, is this book last in the series? So that if it is, let's say that this is, you click it, it's a checkbox, but in the stats later on, you will see then how many series you finished in the year, which I'm actually really excited because this might motivate me to get on with the series and finish some. So then we come to Copile. Um, again, I'm not gonna go through mu too much through Copile, but let me just put some random numbers here. Um, and as you see, as I go, it automatically calculates here and it changes the star rating here. We have a new star system, yay! Well, colors. Sometimes through the spreadsheet, you will see these little arrows. Now, if you try to click them or if you try to input anything, that gives you this warning. It means that it probably has cells that have formulas that if you uh, if you override them with something, uh, something might get broken. <laughs> um, there are some places where you can go and edit that are protected ranges. However, if you do want to change something to customize for yourself, if you're happy with the way the spreadsheet is and if you get this, um, just, just cancel. <laughs> it means that you're not gonna mess something up. If you do mess something up, then there's obviously always command or control and Z to undo it. So I put the I put the ratings here because um, we read 500 pages of this book and maybe I feel comfortable, even though it is a DNF, I still feel comfortable rating it. If you don't feel comfortable rating it or you just DNF'd it right off the bat, um, you can just put in dashes here. <laughs> and this is also similarly, if you have a book that does not fit call pile, but you still want to rate it, you can just type a star rating into the star column. Column, Let's say this was a three, but it will, it will pop up with the same message, but just click okay. And it will put it there. <laughs> oh, typing it is totally fine. Just bear in mind that if if you typed something in there and then you put, I don't know why I'm putting such big numbers in here, it will not work. It will not calculate things for you. If you, if you accidentally click here and then you click OK and it opens this thing, um, just, just highlight all of these again. Oops. Highlight all of these. Right click and hide because you do not you don't need to see them, but if you open it and you're not sure what to do with them um, and they're annoying, uh, right click and hide. Um, there's a couple of spaces like this. Like you don't need to see those. Uh, they're just there for, for the calculations. So let me let me put those ratings back in there. But as we said, we have DNF this one. So if you DNF a book, you can click this button. Um, then there's also the main DNF reason, if applicable, obviously. And then there is a drop down. But again, if you have another reason um, and you would like, if that's a common reason that you want to track, you can obviously just type over this. It will have that little error, error corner, but otherwise it's fine. Um, and then we have, I asked you guys for your main reasons and I added some of mine, but these are stuff that came up the most and I'm hopeful hopeful that it's going to just kind of cover most ground so that we have poor character development, low intrigue, unclear plot, too predictable, pacing is off, there's triggers, uh, poor prose, don't like the format, don't like the art style, annoying characters, poor and clear world building, general apathy, <laughs> we'll try another time, just, you know, just coming back to the book is not, not a good time, but not necessarily a bad book. Um, don't know the reason and my absolute personal favorite, everything is sucky. <laughs> Let's say that this one had poor pros. Then we have the same bez of like when you read it, we said that this was December, so we'll just put something in December. Now this is something people asked before. This is the European way of writing dates because that's how I write the dates. <laughs> but if you do want this to be in American format. You can, of course, do that. You just highlight both of these and you go like in your own, obviously format number more formats, more date and time formats. And then you can, I think, swap it here. There we go. <laughs> we found it. Um, and it will calculate and it will tell you how many days you, it took to read. D DNF, I think maybe was the main 
thing people ask for, but then the second one is uh, language written because I have a lot of fellow bilingual or trilingual people here. So if you read in multiple languages, this is where you'd put it. Let's say we read this one in English. Um, then there is the LGBTQ plus rep. Um, I have three character uh, categories here. We have that the uh, rep was in the main characters. With the then we have absent, which just means like no explicit rep. Uh, but then there's also one that's called present, which is a lot of books that I read actually. Like it's not the main character, but it's someone in, it's, uh, it's either a side character or multiple side characters. So let's say that it was present and then you have a specific, if you want to specify, you can also specify what kind it was, especially if you do reviews or something and you want to mention that. So let's say that this one was bisexual. Again, stick with the same writing and the same format, so they kind of clump together in the stats later. Then we also have, is the author POC, yes or no? Let's say yes, and like above, let's say Asian, if, if you want to track that and clarify for yourself. This is what used to be a gender column, but I just put it written by, and then we have non-binary, women, man, multiple authors is a new one that people ask to add, and also not specified. So let's say that it was not specified. Maybe they write under a pseudonym or something, you know? Another one you guys asked for is the author's nationality. So let's say this one was Irish. And then if it's own voices, another category you guys asked for, um, let's say that this is not apl applicable, um, but you can also add yes if it is. So those are the categories. If you, if you like majority of them, but you don't want some specific one, for example, maybe you don't care how many days it takes you to read stuff, just mark it, right click, delete. If you didn't mean to do that, the command or control Z goes back up. This hopefully, I tried a lot, <laughs> I tried a lot to see if this won't mess up the stat columns because obviously the column names change when you muck about with it. And as much as I mucked about, it didn't, but I can guarantee that it won't. And that's why I also made the basic one. So the basic one, so the basic one I'll show you in a bit. If you still, if you want more than the basic, but less than the plus version, um, then you can also, of course, delete it. You can, and there's also notes if you want to add some particular notes. Also the G note from me. But as I said, I put a lot of these fake books. <laughs> I especially love this one. But yeah, so I, I try to include various things here so we can then check. Um, again, if you don't want to put like subgenres or something, you can always leave it blank. Um, I'm hoping I mentioned most of the things, but let's go to the uh, another tab. So we have three tabs here. We have the Copile tab, the primary stats. I don't know why it's called primary. I actually need to rename this. We have Copile, we have reading stats that I just renamed. Reading stats. And then we have a Copile cheat sheet. So I'm actually gonna go through the cheat sheet first. Very simple. Again, if you, if you forget the Copile brackets and whatnot, you have them here. So you have the basic categories and then you have the rating breakdown and also uh thanks to aj who commented this on one of my videos actually saying that this is how he kind of judges it and i asked him if it's okay to include this here because maybe some of you guys will also find it useful so we got that too and it's gotten dark pretty much now um so let's go into the stats now here's some new stuff Hooray! There's nothing too fancy here, but I hope that you guys will like the new edition. So we have some categories. So the first one is just reading overall. You absolutely don't need to do anything here, uh, but you can click on the stuff if you want to like see it better. So we have same stuff that like before. We have books read per month and then pages read per month. This Both of these include any DNFs that you included, but the DNFs obviously um, now the pages are specifically for pages read. So hopefully that's fine. Um, but we also have these little things here. So this is total books read this year, including DNFs, and also total books read this year, excluding DNFs, if you don't want to count that. Um, depends on your personal thing. So there's 19 by 15 if you take the DNFs out. And then there's also total pages read this year, um, little pile there. Um, then we have books DNFs per month, so you can see how many. I mean, it just really depends if you do even DNF to begin with. But I would highly recommend getting into that practice because you should not waste time on books you don't want to read. Then there's a total DNF um, right here. And we also have the graph for books uh, language, uh, language read in. Um, so this person read in Estonian, Spanish and English. And you can see the breakdown. The little number on the wheels is always the amount of books. 
Um, so one book Estonian, 13 in English, and five in Spanish. But you also have percentage here. Then you have the reading method, <laughs> stone tablet. See, it showed up even if it's not under the drop down thing. <laughs> and then the last thing in this particular bit is the main reason for DNFing the books. Then we have uh, stuff that's relating to the books themselves. So first of all, uh, what genres you read. And there's also a new fun edition of read across nine different genres. So, so this will kind of tell you how many genres you read through this year. Um, if you just stuck to a couple that you love or if you spread out more so than normal. And then since we added the length of the book, uh, we also have this. So um, this shows you the range of like the actual book. So for example, this person read majority of the books that they read were between 350 or 450 pages, if three in each. This is probably very unrealistic because I did include like a whole bunch because I just wanted to showcase. This probably this wheel will probably be much narrower and um, but it could be interesting because maybe you'll notice that you're never reading longer books or if you're only reading longer books then it could be fun to look at. And then we of course have the star rating. Then same as before, you have the age category, then you have publication year, um, then you have the LGBTQ, and then also a breakdown of that. So this would be the stuff that you manually input, how you got the book, how many books were rereads, and how many books you were reading for the first time, series or standalone, and the little icon here for the series finished this year and how many you finished, which this person did five, which go for them. <laughs> then we have things about the author. If this, if the book was written by a POC author, yes or no. If yes, there's a breakdown for that. What the written by section and if it was own voices or if it wasn't. And lastly, we have nationality. And that actually concludes the stats. So that's the new stuff. I hope that's kind of clear. Let me check if I forgot something. <laughs> I know I know some of these things were obviously not going to be something you care or want to track. Um, maybe you absolutely don't care if it's a reread or how you got the book and that's totally fine. You can either skip or just delete that. Um, so if you, for example, delete this one, um, then obviously everything shifts, but this should hopefully be fine <laughs> apart from one graph that will set no data. And you can literally just click either delete or backspace or for max and this will disappear, from, but everything else seems to be okay. So at worst case scenario, if you muck it up too badly, you can always make another copy and just uh, repopulate it. Um, so that is the plus section. I hope you guys like it. So let's say that you want this version. So you will not be able to just click on it and use it. As I said, you do need to make your own copy that will be in your G, in your G drive um, because obviously people need an empty one <laughs> to, to work with. So I can't let people just edit stuff there. Um, so let's say you wanted that plus one, you right click on it and then you click make a copy. So again, if you want to use this and you want your own version, cl right click on the file and make a copy and it will appear in your G drive and you'll be able to edit it from there. You can find your drive in this little icon here. It says my drive. Another thing that people were a little bit alarmed at uh, last time is when you just get your own spreadsheet, you go into the reading stats and you're like, oh my God, there's no data. The stats don't work. They do work, um, but they won't work with nothing in here. So let's say we put really, that's not even numbers. Um, we really quickly just put a little whatever's <laughs> in here. Um, that's a year. And you'll see that things will start appearing here. Um, if it's no data, it just means that we didn't get to that things, uh, to that stuff. So the pie charts obviously will look a bit weird with only one thing in there, but um, the no data is literally because there isn't any data. <laughs> so now let me quickly show you the basic one if that one was a bit too much for you. So the basic version is considerably shorter. We have the title, we have the month, we have the author, the format, pages read, main genre, age category, is this a reread? -re? I, kept, I kept the reread option because it was so asked for. Uh, series and standalone, same. And um, I love the, the finished series, but too, we have obviously the co-pile, um, need to click these. Um, we have the DNF um, one here, date started, date finished, which I need to 
delete um, and and the notes and that's it so in the stats again there's going to be no data just now but stats are obviously also shorter because we have a fewer things but that's i think everything um i am 100 percent sure i would have forgotten something i'll try to answer to people in the comments uh, or other people if you see some someone asking something that you know the answer to please answer as well i hope you'll enjoy this i hope it will be useful and insightful and chat to me down in the comments and i'll see you next time bye Bye.